From what we learn about the recent would-be Trump assassin, he seems to have clearly been an asset of the deep state. He's been criminally charged over a hundred times, including once for possessing an unregistered fully automatic firearm. He was recruiting mercenaries to fight in Ukraine and was on the mainstream news to discuss this. This conflict is definitely black and white. This is about good versus evil. We're battling a situation here where you know, the U Ukrainians and the rest of the world are caring and kind and, and generous and, and unselfish. And, and for some reason, Russia does not grasp this concept that we're, we're all one unit. Seems asinine that we have a, a leader in a country that does not understand the concept of, of being unselfish and being generous. He appeared in a video promoting the Azov Brigade. And despite all this, he was somehow able to get a rifle across state lines and within shooting distance to Donald Trump just two months after a failed assassination attempt. As Edward Snowden pointed out, there is an Oswald vibe here. And he's right. Almost every assassination conspiracy in history has the same telltale signs. Take deep state heavyweight George H.W. Bush, for instance. Although he said he didn't remember where he was that day, George Bush was in Dallas when JFK was shot. He confidentially reported into the FBI with a cryptic message an hour after the assassination from the Sheraton Dallas Hotel. During this time, George Bush was covertly working for the CIA. CIA asset George de Morenschild, who became friends with Lee Harvey Oswald a year before the JFK assassination, was family friends with George Bush. Bush wrote in an internal CIA memo that he first met him in the early 40s and was associated with him for over a decade. Fast forward to when George Bush was vice president alongside President Ronald Reagan, and Reagan was shot by John Hinckley. The Hinckley family was friends with the Bush family since the 1950s when they were neighbors in Midland, Texas. The Hinckleys were donors to George Bush's political campaigns and supported George W. when he first launched his political career. The families were still close at the time of the shooting, but this was ignored by the media. George Bush's son, Neil Bush, said that he was scheduled to have dinner with John Hinckley's brother, Scott, the day after the shooting, and told the press that Scott Hinckley had been at his house for his surprise birthday party a couple months earlier. John Hinckley Jr. was living with his parents during the time he shot Reagan. His father, John Hinckley Sr., was employed at World Vision, a nonprofit funded by CIA proxy USAID. The lone gunman who shot and killed John Lennon, Mark David Chapman, was also an employee of World Vision. In the fall of 1980, Hinckley was arrested at Nashville Airport carrying three guns and was believed to have been stalking President Jimmy Carter, the political opponent of George Bush at the time. The police let him go. Right after that, Hinckley was reportedly stalking the actress Jodie Foster and claimed to have been hearing voices in his head. Notes written by Hinckley were later found where he wrote of a conspiracy to assassinate the president. This was dismissed by his parents as being an imaginary conspiracy and ignored by the court. Dozens of pages concerning Hinckley's personality, his associates, and his financials were deleted by the FBI, and it was decided that Hinckley was insane and acting alone. He was sent to St. Elizabeth's Mental Hospital, a hospital with a long history of involvement with the CIA's MK Ultra program. This is just a quick glimpse at one of the many old soldiers of the deep state. This sort of thing has been going on forever. The only difference now is that the younger generation, most likely victims of trauma-based mind control themselves, don't seem to have the skills or the motivation that their parents and grandparents once had. And because of the internet, more people are seeing it and pushing for the truth. And maybe someday we will stand up against it rather than watch it slowly eat us all. Reporting for InfoWars, this is Greg Reese.